Welcome to this rebroadcast featuring Chris Shea of Life's Journey Life Coaching and author Lisa DeLay. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. And uh, welcome everybody who's here. It looks like we have a couple people here, so welcome <laughs> today. We try to, Chris and I try to come on usually twice a month, and we've been doing things on Thursday nights at eight and I think we're going to switch to Sundays because it's a little I know it's a little more relaxed for me and maybe we will have more people participate I don't, I'm not really exactly. sure but um, it's worth a try yeah we'll, we'll see how it goes we'll have another one of these on the 24th of April and Chris right. will post that and we'll try to put that out on the Twitters and everything and and we'll do another one in a similar vein so I don't, did you pick yours? Oh, you did pick yours already. I just forget yes. what the title is now. Uh, let's see. What okay, did now, I, I put title you on this spot. As you look um, at Yes, so I titled it, let's see, Be at Peace Like the Rock, How Nature Leads Us to Inner Peace. Yeah. And do yeah. you want to, for people who don't know you, there's looks like there's nine and two people who are... I still don't know what that nine and two means. I guess maybe two can, two can respond and nine all together are watching. I'm not really sure. but um, I would like to think 11 total, but that's just yeah. my mind. Yeah, I think that's right. And, and the one I was on uh, yesterday was supposed to be an hour long, started at 11, and went two hours. I was so oh. worn out. But by the end, we're over, there were like, almost 60 people by that point. It was really, it was really strange. Just kind of huh? kept gathering. And um, on a Saturday, I don't know what the heck was up with that. But <laughs> I don't know. I, I guess we now have a challenge. Yeah. You know, the other thing was that the, um, and it might have been because they're updating things, but the recording didn't come through either. Oh, no. So I'm <laughs> hoping for the best on this one. Well, I yeah, hope it comes through on this one. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Do you want to introduce yourself, Chris? Give a brief intro. Sure. I'm uh, Chris Shea, and uh, welcome everyone who's with us, and glad that you are here with us. And uh, as Lisa mentioned, we try to do this a couple times a month, and uh, thank you for joining us. I uh, also have a podcast, which is called On Finding Peace. And you can search for that on iTunes and Stitcher and TuneIn, all those you know places wherever there's podcasts. Uh, and my website is uh, lifesjourneyblog.com. And that's where I put my uh, blog posts. And you can uh, learn about what I do in my uh, private practice of life coaching and counseling. Yep. And to, to uh, introduce myself to you briefly, my name is Lisa DeLay, and I have a podcast called Spark My Muse. It comes out twice weekly and on a lot of different topics, uh, a lot of things having to do with self-improvement and growth. And I have a whole bunch of people from various backgrounds. Some are Christians, some are atheists, some are scientists, some are writers. And I like to keep it d diverse and um, just kind of like that. I, my, next, my next guest is actually the guy from... The one you feed podcast and I, Eric Zimmer. He's a really, really neat yeah. guy. I really enjoy him a lot. And uh, he's he was a an addict. He was an um, alcoholic yeah. and a heroin addict. He's in recovery, and I really enjoy his podcast. He was one of the very first people I ever uh, subscribed to as a podcast listener. So I oh. hunted him down a number of years ago. <laughs> I started listening to him, and you know you. Mm -hmm start listening to podcasts and you're not sure, you know, some you let go, some you keep. And I've always right. found this to be so content rich that I, I finally found him. I finally hunted him down. Oh, and, that's uh, excellent. Yeah. So it'll, it's fun. It'll be a good one. And um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully we um, can have some of you back on a regular basis who are watching to come back and see what we're up to. So we, Chris and I found each other through kind of the blab community and we've both figured that it would be more fun to co-host together. We have overlapping interests and instead of just blabbing by ourselves, it's always <laughs> fun to have someone to do that with and to also invite you if you're listening to come and participate with us as well. 
definitely. We do have an open seat or uh, type in your comments, but it's always great to learn from each other. And that's one of the things that I love about doing this. It's not just uh, us trying to say we have the answers. It's us seeking answers and love to hear how, uh, you know, you get on with life and find your answers and truths and inner peace and yeah. all that good stuff. Yeah, and as we were considering what to talk about for April, we were thinking about spring coming, and then we got a mm -hmm. of Tony Phil lied to us, obviously. <laughs> we got all the snow. <laughs> well, I, I, I know you're, I know you're uh, kind of a Pennsylvania Obama person, but why are we listening to an animal? <laughs> He's obviously senile. <laughs> or something. Oh, uh, yeah, he's a he's a liar. And uh, he, I think mm -hmm. we should impeach him immediately. But yes, yeah, right. so we were thinking. Or he could be a jokester. He could be sitting in his hole right now, just laughing and laughing. Yeah, it's the jokes on us. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we were thinking about springtime and how a lot of us are, well, we've started to get out of the house until we were chased back in by the freezing cold. But <laughs> <laughs> thinking about how getting in touch with nature can be a time of real renewal as we kind of get reconnected with the outdoors and our surroundings. And it's a, it can be a time for rebirth for a lot of us. And just wondering right. what, how other people connect with nature and find, find that to be a source of renewal. Some of you might connect with that, others, others might not. But I know for, for myself, that's always been. I was very, I was a kid who would, and you could tell me, Chris, how, how it was for you. But I was a kid in the summertime that there were plenty of days I would be outside when, when I woke up, maybe like eight or nine in the morning, and I'd pack mm -hmm. myself a lunch. And I might come back if I really had to use the bathroom, but <laughs> or sometimes I'd just find a place in the woods. Mm -hmm. he, my brother and I would hang out a lot until maybe I was like 13 or 14 years old. And we'd go into the woods or go bike riding, and I'd just take food with us. We'd take food, and I wouldn't come back till supper. And that was outdoors was just how we spent our summers. Mm -hmm. and, and that was the same for me. Uh, you know, summers was bicycle time. Yeah. And my friends and I, yeah, I don't know what time in the morning, but whenever we were woken up, you didn't have to kick us out of the house. You know, you woke up, you hopped on your bike, and off you went. Our rule was when the street lights came on, you came home. Uh, so we were all over the place and, you know, we lived in the suburbs, but not very rural, although we had a nice, um, as a child, it seemed to be a very dense forest across the street. And uh, yeah, we'd bike around for a while, we'd hike through the forest, we'd have our adventures and, uh, you know, life was just wonderful. and. Um, you know, I go back uh, to that area now, and the forest is a subdivision. Right. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, they're, they're taking away my childhood. But, <laughs> um, but, yeah, life for me was outdoors and the woods and any stream I could find, any wildlife we could find. Mm -hmm. And that's really what my friends and I uh, focused on. Yeah. And I think a lot of kids now, of course, there's the video games and electronics and everything, too. But a lot of homes now, not not my home, I, my home can get into the 90s a lot of days in the summertime. But a lot of homes have central air and kids are way more comfortable indoors. And I, I remember in the summertime with me, we would just go deep into the woods or near water in the summer because that was much cooler. And occasionally we would go into like my garage where it was just cooler because it was cement and we'd sit on the right. really cool cement floor, <laughs> maybe have a, a mm -hmm. popsicle <laughs> or get ice cream. And uh, I remember we would bike three miles to get ice cream at this one store. It was the closest place we could go. So we get, you know, it was pretty hot with the asphalt mm -hmm. and, the, you know, you'd see the, you'd see the um, heat <laughs> waves coming up. <laughs> you'd bike three miles and then it was actually more downhill, get an ice cream and then bike kind of like uphill <laughs> three miles home right. pretty much pretty dehydrated <laughs> at that point and uh but that was i remember just being this outdoorsy kid and really connecting with nature and looking mm -hmm. knowing which what the which birds were which and stuff but my sister really you know same family but she was much more of an indoor person so different people 
it's not like I had the childhood everyone did. My sister in the same family, she appreciated being indoors more than I did. So yeah. for some people, you know, connecting with nature is not going to be their first thing. And I, I know my mm -hmm. kids, even though it's, even though I try to chase my kids outside, they, you know, <laughs> my daughter's more of a bookworm and my, my son does model railroading and he's like, I want to work on my layout. <laughs> Please let me work on my layout. And my daughter's like, eh. Well, I, I can understand that. I, I grew up with model trains and my father's old Lionel trains. And, uh, but that for me was the nighttime activity when we couldn't mm -hmm. ride the bikes outside. Yeah. Uh, or the rainy day or whatever it was. But uh, I, I can empathize to a degree. I mean, the, the layout is important and setting it up is important. So, oh yeah, I spent many an hour in the basement just changing track lines and watching it go around and around. Um, but that sparked imagination. You know, it was always a new adventure every time you did that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes dinosaurs would attack, but you know, life happens. <laughs> well, my son would have a huge problem with that because it wouldn't be realistic. So he's he's a real purist. <laughs> but what do you do? You have any do you have any spiritual practices that you do out in nature um, nowadays in your life now as an adult? Really, what I look at when I go out in nature is how can I be very mindful of what's going on for me. And this is how it's been for a number of years that taking a walk outside is very much meditative. Mm. You know, a lot of people can sit somewhere and quiet and, and that's great. Uh, you know, I, I was trained to sit in a chapel for however long for meditation and that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, but my mind actually seems to wander more if I'm sitting in a church or a chapel trying to be still than it does if I'm walking through nature. Mm. And you would think the opposite because nature has a lot of distractions. Mm. But for me, I focus not in, on that as a distraction, but on what I can see and what I can learn from them. Mm. And I try to do it in a mindful way in the sense that, you know, what are the small things? You know, do you notice, you know, the spider or the worm or the, and or you know and a few times might stop and you know look stare at you know this ant line walking across the trail or something and you know for me that that's meditative that's appreciating the stillness of nature in a sense but it's appreciating what we have around us versus all of the chaos that typically is around us yeah. so and leave, it's leave usually the phone at home it. too Oh, like, Pardon? do you also like, do you also leave your phone at home and you try to eliminate like the, the interruptive kind of distraction? Mm, I wish I were that good. <laughs> um, although the way I have my phone set up is the only time it makes a noise is if I'm getting a phone call or a text message. So emails coming through or social media notices, any of that mm -hmm. stuff, it doesn't let me know, you know, except for icons. So really, I'm not going to pick up that phone and look at it as I'm walking. Now, if it rings, I'm going to see who's calling because, you know, it's a family. Do I have to pick it up? Um, and if it's not family, I'm not picking it up if I'm not walking. So I kind of have it, one, for safety, but yeah, in case there's an emergency, I guess. Yeah. But I'm not looking at social media or anything. I, I have been doing that, too. And I decided that I was either going to I made a decision that I was either going to leave my phone in my car, mm -hmm. which is <laughs> like, ah, oh! yeah. Or I was gonna, <laughs> what am I going to do? Yeah. <laughs> Will yeah. I live? You know, um, yeah. Or just put it on airplane mode because then nothing can come in. But I could still take pictures. Right. Like so, I like taking pictures of if I'm outdoors, and I can still do that mm -hmm. with my phone. I can still check the time, but really, I can't receive or send. I can't get any notifications. Right. Of course, if I still need it for some sort of emergency, I'd have it. But 
um, that way there really is no real distraction and I am not tempted to, mm -hmm. oh, let me quick, just go online real quick and just check this thing. Cause then I have to push a couple <laughs> buttons and then I'm stopped from doing it. And mm -hmm. it's like, I have to, I do have to prevent myself from doing that quick. Oh, real quick on Instagram. Oh, because I, I'm too, I'm too, yeah. that's nah, bad. So I, the airplane mode and I'll also <laughs> put it on airplane mode if I'm doing like an, a guest interview or like now on this call, I'm not, mm -hmm. nobody can interrupt me. I'm, this is all I'm doing. So right. it's on airplane mode or just completely out of the room and I can't hear it. And so that discipline is, it has to be one of my rules because it will interrupt me in a way that's mm -hmm. unnecessary. And you know, my walks aren't longer than an hour. I'm not, it's not like, they're not longer than an hour. It's half hour or something, you know. I think so, the world can, can it, survive if you're not on your phone. For everyone will be okay. <laughs> I might not be okay. <laughs> but that that is an interesting perspective shift that I've thought about. You know, because as you mentioned, when we were children, you know, riding about and here and there, nobody worried about you know, what if we can't get a hold of someone or, know. you know, anything like that. That just wasn't a thought, you know, and, and yeah. today here we are trying to think of what do we do with our phone, you know, while we're out taking a walk. Um, <laughs> I know, it's crazy, yeah, it, right? It's just this whole shift that all of a sudden it's this necessity. Yeah. Um, and I fall to that, you know, I'm not putting that out there as a blame. I, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm at the same way, but, uh, but yet it, as kids and young adults that, wasn't a concern, you know, I mean, I, I made it back and forth to college and all of that without a phone, you yeah. know, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, you we just hope that if you ran into trouble, that you could get to a pay phone eventually or someone would give you a ride. But and when you think about <laughs> bad stuff did happen in, in terms of like breakdowns and it mm -hmm. happen. But when you think about all the trips you've made and all the breakdowns you've had, how many really were there? I don't know. A couple. I didn't have a lot, but, but, you know, I think back then, because you didn't have the cell phones, people would stop to see if you needed help. That's true. And, <laughs> and I, I know even today, if I'm going down the road and I see someone on the side of the road with their flashers and their hood up, you know, I keep driving by mainly because I figure, well, they got their phone on. I'm sure they called somebody. Yeah. You know, but. Before the phones, I mean, you know, I would have stopped or somebody would have stopped yeah. and, you know, hey, can I help you? Can I drive you somewhere? Can I, you know, get you to a phone? Yeah. Um, but I make the assumption, and maybe I shouldn't make that assumption, but, you know, I assume they're on the side of the road and I've already called who they need to and they're just yeah, waiting. Probably. And they probably have, you know, yeah. I yeah. mean, really, that's it's probably what's happened, but. Yeah. I, yeah. Even, even people who are, you know, in their 90s have their own phones which is funny it's Typically, funny yeah. to think um what they you know what they've seen in their life with the technology and and all they've seen that somebody so, mm -hmm. yeah i i don't know with with being in nature i was the the guy i was just talking to who'll be on my podcast Derek zimmer was talking about having trouble with typical meditation in terms of like concentrating on your breath or having a mantra mm -hmm. or no, just um, just even that meditation would ever be pleasant. He doesn't find it pleasant, but he finds it useful. And, mm -hmm. and the chatter doesn't really stop. And I'm kind of like that too. You know, my mind is really, it just goes and goes. And then I lay down to sleep and it's like electricity. I'm just out cold really quickly. And so um, it's like the light goes on and the light goes off and it's just constant, you know, the whole time. So Meditation can be, it really has to be a really disciplined practice for me to, to calm the chatter down. It, it's taken mm -hmm. years and years to just kind of be able to focus. But what he talked about was, was really great. And he talked about just doing sound meditation outdoors. So to just go sit on a park bench or mm -hmm. a comfortable place on the ground and just, you know, close your eyes and just listen for sounds and be attentive to what those are for a period of time. So Maybe you'll hear a bird or maybe you'll hear a truck in the background or something. And then you're just right. noticing them and drawing and then drawing back and then noticing it and drawing back. And I, and I kind of thought, oh, that's meditation. I could 
I could totally do that. That sounds great. You know, that you would mm -hmm. just be aware of all the sounds in your environment and then um, and not let your mind wander into your, you know, workaday thoughts or chatter and you just drop right. into different sounds and just be be present where you are and hear the sounds where you are and just do that for an extended period of time, like 10 to 20 minutes. And mm -hmm. I thought I, I, that's actually something I really feel would be not very hard to do because right. I, I enjoy, I enjoy the outdoors so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I would say that for me, when I got more into mindfulness and trying to stay in the present moment, falling asleep became easier in that sense mm. because my mind was always on the go more so in the, the worried sense on the go. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I would lay down to go to sleep and it was always worried about what's going to happen at work. You know, what was, did I get this done? And, and there was just a lot going on and that would take a lot of, you know, my sleep was just with those anxieties and those thoughts and, and perpetually. And it really does seem to me that, you know, recently, the more that I can work in, in a mindfulness and a meditative way, yeah, you know, I, I lay down, close my eyes, and very quickly, um, you know, gone. Uh, so I, I think that's changed it. And, and what I do like with meditation is, you know, it can be done um, in really many different ways. Mm -hmm. um, but there's been a lot of studies that do show the effect that nature has. And it doesn't surprise me because, you know, we as humans, I think we're, we're geared for the nature and the cycle of nature. And over the millennia, we've just gotten further and further away from that. And, uh, you know, so I think when people now are finding time to go into the woods and into the parks and now, you know, they're, they're doing these studies that say, you know, hey, take a walk through the woods, you'll feel better. You know, and, and I kind of sit back and go, really, you got money to do that study? Uh, you know, but I mean, it kind of shows, you know, what, what I think, though, is natural for us. But we've been so removed that I think people now are so... I, I don't know, I mean, chaotic in life and everything's coming at us. And, and I think, yeah, with our phones and then we're always on and we're always, uh, you know, reachable and, and all of this, that we don't take that time to relax. And, you know, we don't sit with nature and we're, we're so separate from it. You know, and then I think there is that pull, you know, to get back to that and, you know, to like, uh, you know, the good old days, so to speak, when... Um, you know, we sat around the campfire, you know, because that's all you had, you know, <laughs> yeah. small tribe living in caves, whatever it may be, but you sat around the campfire for warmth and for whatever, mm -hmm. but you were in nature and you were still. Mm -hmm. and recently I had on Christine Sign, who has some great resources at her website is Godspace dash MSA, which stands for Mustard Seeds, Mustard Seed Associates. So it's godspace-msa.com. She has tons of resources for all kinds of prayer practices and prayer resources and praying the hours and all, I mean, you name it. It's just, it's tons of resources that she's done for years and years. And she's, she's a gardener and a poet and a teacher, written books. And I really have enjoyed her resources over the years with a lot of connections to, to um, Celtic Christianity, but she does a lot of gardening and she talks about really getting in there with the earth and and really, mm. you know, really feeling the earth and, and all the parallels, the spiritual parallels and parables um, that have to do with mm. like the garden of our heart and the soil of our heart. And uh, I found nice. that so refreshing. And she actually kind of made me, you know, I have a little garden and it was just like three tomato plants last year and some lettuce <laughs> so I could have some salad mm -hmm. basically. And I'm like, wow, I gotta, that might be a good thing. I just have to make sure the rabbits stay out of it. But um, mm -hmm. that, that idea of taking some time to get, not just walking around through nature, but actually my hands in the dirt and mm -hmm. cultivating plants and 
being actually a part of nurturing plants and seeing them develop from, you know, little tiny plants into plants that are fruitful, Mm -hmm. thinking of my own life in those terms. Uh, There's something really there that I don't, I don't want to be separated from those types of things and just be just connected with technology. That's not, the best analogy Mm -hmm. you know the plants and the living things are the better parable for my life right Right. and i loved her i loved her um just the way she was seeing the world and then every so often she'll have a a desk garden i think she calls it she'll pull something inside Mm -hmm. and she'll put specific things in and and it'll for a season of time it's like her garden Mm -hmm. of that season and she'll have different plants and a reminder of things that she wants to keep in, in the forefront of her mind as she works, she'll have this right. specific, specific plants for specific yes. time. And it's like, so she's bringing the garden to her. And, you know, there's just, there's mm-hmm. just a lot of good stuff she has there. She's, I, I love her. I'm a, a huge fan. <laughs> so I was thinking maybe I need to think about uh, heading out and getting some, some young plants and having that kind of a connection with nature this year and doing more have some herbs that mm-hmm. have been coming up year after year, but I'm um, thinking about doing a, a little bit more with my little patch out there. Right. Have you gardened much well, it, for yourself? No, unfortunately, I kill <laughs> things like that. I am not Maybe doing this gardening. this is the year for you, Chris. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> um, you have a brown thumb. I, I, I cut grass. <laughs> I will appreciate <laughs> gardens of other people. Um, but, uh, I fear we all have our gifts and, you know, if somebody has a gift of gardening, help feed me. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but growing up, my father had a large garden. I used to help him out in the garden and, uh, we had the manual labor of the garden. You know, he, he kind of knew how to make things grow and I would go out there and pull the weeds and rake and, you know, stuff like that and dig holes cause I was a kid. But, um. But, you know, I I think it it is very meditative and and refreshing because when we're gardening and working, you know, outdoors and that type of, of, you know, work, it is going to slow us down. You know, I mean, you have to work in between, you know, the rows of plants and and you have to be aware of, you know, are there any, you know, bugs you don't want on the leaves? You know, is there anything wrong with each plant? And Mm -hmm. so... Anytime, you know, we're deeply focused in things like that, it's keeping us in in that moment. And, you know, it really, I think, helps us to understand, you know, that everything that happens, happens in the now. And we notice those things. And, you know, if we can take that and say, well, if I can nurture these plants and I know what work it takes to nurture these, not only can I have that satisfaction when I eat the fruit of it but if we do look at that spiritually you know is that not how we can be nurtured when we look at what god does for us you know and and how much time does god take in in that cultivating and and that patience and working with us and you know not really giving up um you know and, and i think if we start looking at those terms we can find some of that renewal for ourselves. You know, we, we can find an, an inner renewal in the sense of the quiet time that we spend out there. And, you know, a renewal if, if we focus that on our religious beliefs, right. you know, and, and look at those parallels. And to me, it, it, it'll make a big difference, uh, you know, just those periods of, of quiet and reflection. Yeah. And there's something about, you you can garden in a hurry, I guess. <laughs> you could, but it that, usually, that's very possible. Yeah, it usually slows you down, though. It usually is something you you can you can um, experience some joy with if you actually slow down and and do it. Right. Um, I mean, you have to make the conscious effort to yeah. do that. Yeah, and I think when I I have a little raised raised bed kind of thing. It's not super high, but it. It's like I put some boards around and it's maybe 10 by 10 feet. And if you, if it's raised enough, Mm -hmm. you don't have to bend over and hurt your back and everything. And you just add (laughs) topsoil and it's pretty easy. It's, you know, it's not that tricky. Right. 
And so once <laughs> slightly raised up and then um, it's fairly fertile soil because you've added the soil and everything. And when I like to work on it, it's either in the morning when it's in shade or it's in the evening mm -hmm. when, when it's already not as hot. So it's kind of a pleasant experience. It's not like you're out there just baking away. And it, it, so it's kind of like this is a really uh, kind of pleasant, joyful time. So it's, for me, it is a slower time. I can get mm -hmm. a cup of coffee, put it out there with me, maybe, maybe play some music, but maybe just kind of enjoy the birds singing. And that can be its own devotional practice or own spiritual practice yeah. that you can work in. Definitely. You know, that, that can be part of your, like summer and spring can be a slow down time if you want it to be, where you, you can just connect more with nature. Like we're talking about connecting with nature for renewal. And it can really mm -hmm. be a um, nourishing, refreshing time of like feeding your soul differently than you have in months past mm -hmm. you're, you're almost like getting energy in a different way or something you're you're feeding right. yourself in a different way from a different trough so I'm, not, I'm not sure my metaphors are working well tonight but i know that when i've experienced just you know i'm weeding i don't like i don't want love weeding but i know that this is kind of my time to enjoy the outdoors at a pace that mm -hmm. that i that i appreciate the most a slower pace um, on my own time, maybe it's only 15 or 20 minutes, but there's something really nice about it. And mm -hmm. as long as you're enjoying what you're doing and, and you know that, oh, well, I'm going to get some, you know, I'm going to get some cherry tomatoes out of this later. You know, it's kind of, it can be yeah. really, it can be really a nice spiritual practice too. Not just a practical thing in other words. Right. And I think teaching, you know, ourselves is patience. You know, like you say, you know, I've got these cherry tomatoes when they're ready. You know, and, and and I think that's something else where we can look at in, in our own lives where, you know, everything now is instantaneous. Yeah. And when you do something like that, uh, unless you're some person doing experiments because they're trying to rush all this stuff nowadays. Yeah. But, you know, if you've just got your back air garden, uh, you know, you really have to do it at its time. And when it's going to be ready, it's going to be ready, whether we want it sooner or not. Mm. You know, so how does that in, in, in its own way help us to, you know, reflect upon slowing ourselves down? Mm. You know, that do these things have to be completed right now? Can we take more time with it? Can we maybe do something different? that's going to refresh us mm -hmm. to go back to whatever say our challenge is uh, but really just to help us to slow down and you know if we look at nature especially in growing that's really what it's about you know it does it in its time and, and it works if we do it in nature's time it works it's when we don't do it in nature's time you know i think things get messed up mm -hmm. and you know and, and, I think a lot of ways isn't that true with us. You know, we try to rush something or, you know, make our own quick decisions, you know, versus thinking certain decisions through. And uh, you, know, you just end up with maybe something not as good as it would be if we were patient enough to wait for its time. Mm. Yeah, the, the whole thing of rhythm of life, I was speaking to someone about rhythm of life. And, you know, that's mm -hmm. the one thing we can't rush you know, if we want it to be fall tomorrow, not going to happen. Even if we really want it to, you know, you can't rush seasons. Well, we did jump right back to winter. So. Yeah, well, that's true. That's true. Um, yeah, you never know. Uh, but, you know, the, there's seasons of, of the year and there's seasons of life and there's rhythms that, um, you know, that there's day and night. And there's all these rhythms of life that are very natural. And if you want to rush them, uh, it usually... Right. Usually gets all messed up. I was I was just had a conversation with a stranger. Um, we were eating at a diner yesterday, and we were having I was having a conversation with a, a woman that, you know, I had no idea who this woman is. I'll never see her again, I'm mm -hmm. sure. And she was talking about going to Florida and seeing all these women who looked exactly the same. And the reason why they all looked pretty much exactly the same, even though they varied in in age by decades, was because there's only two or three plastic surgeons in town. <laughs> and they look about the same because <laughs> that's how they roll, you know. 
And thinking yeah, about exactly. Yeah. And so thinking about that, you know, there's rhythms and seasons of life and there's and you know, you look one way when you age, right? So you, you're gonna look a certain way when you age, mm -hmm. unless you pay someone to change your looks, right? Exactly. Um, and, exactly. Uh, and then you're gonna look not how you would look if you were younger, you're just gonna look mm -hmm. some other younger way and some abnormal way but then you know yes you can go and and you can get things done to your face to look lifelike <laughs> as it as if you were younger but mm -hmm. it's not going to be it, it's not you know that's kind of like that's kind of like one of those things you're sort of hijacking a rhythm of life and you're kind of trying right. to make it work but it doesn't mean that it's going to be you know, yeah, you sort of look like a younger person, <laughs> but you can kind of tell like you look like that person too and that person. And it, mm -hmm. and it, and it's, it doesn't exactly work, you know? So like, yes, right. I guess you could say that your face looks less wrinkly, but it's, it's just kind of going against nature and natural cycles. And, mm -hmm. and you could be maybe more happy that you don't have the crow's feet as, you know, but I, but I wonder too, like that, we're, we are trying to cheat it. And when we try to cheat the rhythm mm -hmm. and the seasons of life, um, it's, it is at a cost. And it's mm -hmm. not at a cost that we're assuming that it is. And, um, and then there's all the upkeep of, <laughs> of that cost. <laughs> exactly. And I'm not just talking about plastic <laughs> surgery, you know, but, but that anything <laughs> hijack like that or anything we rush or we're not willing to take in its normal cycle. There's a cost, there's unintended costs and consequences that mm -hmm. we're not maybe prepared to deal with, or we don't even right. know what's coming. And, and I think that um, it's just something to, to take into consideration when we, when we're in the natural world, the natural world works a certain way. And yeah, you can kind of mess with it, but it, it's going to do what it's going to do. And so you have to kind of, you do have to kind of, you know, be, be one with it. You have to kind of go along with it and you, you mm -hmm. can try to resist it, but you're going to kind of be the fool in the end. <laughs> I think in a way, you know, like you're going to make a really nice looking corpse if you can't keep getting plastic surgery, but you know what, you'll still be food for worms. So congratulations, but <laughs> you know, yeah. um, and, and I'm, I'm sure the worms are adapting to plastic. So, you know, did you hear about that? That there's actually a new, um, a new rock that's been formed that, that is also like the, like plastic and is part of the, is part of the rock. Like, um, it's it, there's a new there's a new rock and it, it's partially plastic and they, it has a new category that it's it's adapted interesting um obviously it's partially artificial but there's like a new category of rock now <laughs> because mm -hmm. because it does adapt eventually to like actual rock and then it becomes in, intertwined with it but right. um yeah so i don't i don't know exactly where i was i actually had a point with that but um that well, I, I, I think, you know, in, in hearing that, because, you know, to me, there is the cycle of nature and you, you do have the seasons. But I think one of the things that's important that we tend to miss is all of these cycles have a purpose. And when we try to do something different or try to stop a certain cycle or mess with the cycle, you know, could those unintended consequences be the fact of, uh, having issues with and what the purpose is, you know, so, yeah. you know, I mean, all living things are going to age, you know, if, if we just learn what the purpose, you know, for each of us in the aging process is, it helps us to be more who we are. And I think when we're fighting who we are, that's where a lot of the anxiety and the conflict comes in. You know, so maybe nature in its renewing of us, oh. if we can learn from nature in, in the sense that it has a process and it works through a process and it doesn't really deviate from that process because it's worked for nature for, you know, since the world's been around, oh. uh, you know, the plants in the natural world has done what it's done since the beginning. It, it's us who come along and think we know better. Mm. You know, and, and 
what are we doing a mess with the purpose? In a sense, this is kind of a preview to my topic of being like the rock. Mm. Um, you know, because the premise for uh, that one is, is, you know, the the rock is the rock, and that's it. Mm. It does what the rock does, mm. you know. But we as humans want to do, you know, what. I don't know. I mean, you know, everything else and, and even be non-human uh, in the sense that, well, I'm not going to age. I'm going to do plastic surgery. I'm going to do all these chemicals. I'm going to do all this makeup. I'm going to do all this because I can't let people see that I'm aging. Right. You know, well, whether the plastic surgery is good or not or, or what you're doing is, is well done or not, we all know you're aging. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so... You know, I mean, you're not fooling anybody, you know, because all of your contemporaries know you're the same age, <laughs> you know, so, you know, why fight what the purpose is, you know, why create this anxiety within, you know, oneself when you could just, you know, try to find how can I be at peace in this process and what is the purpose of this process for me, just like autumn has a purpose and winter has a purpose mm. And, uh, you know, that they all do what they do. And, you know, sometimes fall and winter may not be the most beautiful of seasons, but that's also a perspective shift. Well, and, and beautiful. You know, I tend to think they are, yeah, actually. And beautiful in what way? Because um, as you were saying that, yeah, I was exactly. kind of like, you obviously don't understand what it's like to be a woman. But um, <laughs> uh, <No. laughs> because there is a lot... I mean, just speaking from my perspective and other people, you can weigh in if you're a woman and you feel differently. I'd love to hear from you. Um, I was just talking to a friend today who's who's gone through some health problems. And I said, you know, as a younger woman, I really, I don't know why this is, and I think I've heard this from other women too, is that you really connect, <clears throat> and I think this, this would apply to men as well, is that you really associate yourself with your body. You're you, you feel healthy and you really connect with your my body is me and I'm my body. Right. And especially if you um, feel like you get attention because of how you look or something like that. And you have identity that way. And then as your body starts breaking down and not really working or you get sick or you have troubles with your body in some way, you're like, what's going on? I, I'm not my body. Like this isn't working anymore. This isn't, I'm having all this trouble. And you start to separate at least I'm speaking for myself, you know, like, okay, my knee hurts. I don't feel like I'm part of my body anymore. I feel like my body's quit on me and I'm more than my body, right? I'm more than my body. And so as you get older, uh, you realize that you realize a shift happens and you realize there's something called glamour, which is like from the age of 18 to 26, that's like completely the pinnacle of beauty in our society. And it's really not beauty, it's glamour youthful glamour mm -hmm. and then there's something else beauty that has nothing to do with glamour that has this it's in it's sort of seen and not seen it's people sort of emit beauty in this mm -hmm. seen and unseen way and and people are just sort of beautiful in how they are in their spirit and it can be glamorous or maybe not some some of the most glamorous people are sort of the most unbeautiful people sometimes <laughs> you know and some of the people mm -hmm. that are the, the wrinkliest old people you've ever seen would never make the cover of Vogue or some of the most gorgeous, beautiful people you've ever met yeah. and you're, you're just stunned by their beauty. But of course it's not glamour. Mm -hmm. It's not glamour we're talking about. It's actually real beauty. And so, so I see that, so I see the shift in, in myself as I, as I age, but also as I, I guess I grow wise, I don't want to be so presumptuous because it's my, it just might be a, mental illness but um it's just that, that there's a shift as i get older and i'm like i'm not my body and there's other stuff going on there's things aren't what they seem you know that things aren't i thought things were one way mm -hmm. really things are very different and i don't care like i i don't look like i'm 20 but also i don't care and i know i used to pity women who were like mm -hmm. looked older. no they must be so sad that they look older <laughs> <laughs> and they were probably really pitying me, right? They're like, no. Oh. So yeah, she's she's young, but she's a fool, you know. It's just it's just really interesting how you shift. Mm -hmm. Right. 
Well, and, and, and you know, I think that's the thing. And, and for me, that this is that part of nature because not only can we learn from the nature of how we, it just is what it is, but, you know, as you're saying, if, if we can be comfortable with who we are at the age that we are and know that this is for a purpose, you know, and, and I agree with you, you know, I mean, you know, back in the 20s, I, I thought I knew it all and, and you know, it was going to change the world and all of this. And, you know, now that I'm older, I mean, I hope I've made changes in the world, but I also know looking back that I knew next to nothing and and I think when I was telling people that I knew everything, they were just inwardly laughing at me, <laughs> you know, because they knew, they knew that one day I'm going to realize <laughs> this kid has no idea. He was adorable, that guy. <laughs> exactly. And he's so cute and so wrong. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I think it is all in, in that outlook, that, that inner beauty, the inner outlook of just accepting who we are at the stage that we are and to know that each stage of our life serves a purpose. Mm. And, you know, those early days served a purpose. And, you know, hopefully as we age and, and grow with some wisdom, it serves a purpose. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, and, and, and that's really is what bothers me with a lot of commercialism in our society because it, it wants people to stay at a certain stage. Mm. But we're not meant to stay at a certain stage. You know, we are meant to get old, and that might mean wrinkly, and that might mean slower and achier. And, <laughs> well, it certainly means achier for me. <laughs> but it, I'm going to stay here. But, <laughs> but, you know, you know, at what point did that become wrong? You know, what, what, when was that the bad thing? Right. Because that's the natural thing. You know, I didn't make a choice to become achier. Right. You know, one day I got out of bed and couldn't move. <laughs> you know, and when I was younger, you bounced out of bed, you know. I didn't make a choice <laughs> for that. It is what it is. It's nature. You know, and at some point I might get wrinkle or, you know, and I mean, I've got gray in the beard. I didn't put that there for a look. It happened. <laughs> You know, so I, I don't know, you know, I, I've never understood that fighting against what's happening versus accepting what's happening. Mm -hmm. that, that's never been a thing of mine. Right, right. Well, you know, I, I think that everybody has their own, everybody has their own way that they deal with getting older or fighting it or not fighting it. Some people really are, embrace it really easily. I, I know that there's... Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's guys who are dyeing their hair for whatever reason. I mean, I, I don't mm -hmm. judge. I don't judge. I, I might oh, yeah. dye my hair in a year or two when I, I mean, I have a couple of grays. Uh, <laughs> it might happen. I'm not, I'm not going to judge anybody for doing that. And, you know, it's kind of like what you're comfortable with in, in some of those areas. But, but the other thing is just that, like, what is the... It really has to. It really has to go back to that core problem or need. Like if you're doing it because you feel a, some sort of self-loathing or not an acceptance of yourself where you are with who you are. Because I know some people are like, "Oh, I want to look nice," and it kind of ends there. And there's other people who are like, "I really am unhappy with myself, and I really am ashamed. Right. I'm ashamed that I'm getting older, and I'm ashamed I look like this." And mm -hmm. that can really be a thing. I, and I, you know, I, a, lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of people struggle just being terribly insecure. And I think that's actually kind of normal. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Kind of normal to, to uh, one degree or another, right? And yeah, then exactly. when, you, when you really, and, and that's why, and that's why when you, when you have your identity sourced in, God, higher power, when it's not, doesn't begin and end with you, your identity doesn't begin and end with mm -hmm. you. It really, it really does shift and it doesn't have, you don't have to hold up that entire burden yourself. Right. Exactly. You know, it's because for me, and I, I think this is where nature really helps and, and hopefully, you know, if, if someone is feeling, you know, self-conscious of who they are and, and maybe what they're becoming, to try to take some nice meditative walks in nature, you know, because in nature we can see all the stages of life. If, if you get the opportunity yeah. to walk through woods, you know, you see the yeah. new growth and the middle growth and the old growth. 
And, mm. you know, you might get to see, you know, the mother bird with the, you know, babies and the, and, and maybe begin to understand they're not judging each other. They're just doing what they do, you know, and, and at some point they're born and grow. And at some point they're an old tree or an old plant or, you know, that old bird trying to fly, you know, where it's going, but, mm. but they just are whatever it is doing what they do to the best of their ability. And, and there is no judgment. And, and I, I really believe it is our society that's put that judgment on us, you know, because we might feel that anxiety about how we look and, and the low self-esteem about how we look because you watch TV and you see the ads and the billboards and everything else that says, this is how you should look. Well, you know, who's to say that is how I should look? You know, who came up with that? And uh, nobody asked that question. You know, I I just find it amazing that as the culture, you know, created that, you know, people just went, oh, yeah, we got to look like that. Did anybody ask who came up with that? Why is that the standard? It's arbitrary. It's arbitrary. Exactly. It, it, it is I, I think so. I, I don't know of any standard book that says here's how to look and go for it. Well, I mean, you could say it's arbitrary. I mean, I, I guess you could say it's the most fertile at a certain age, then that would be the most, you know, a mating thing. But you can also look back into the 1700s and see powdered wigs and realize mm-hmm. that what was important then was wisdom and the wisdom of age and people didn't live that long. And so, if, you know, George Washington is wearing a white powdered wig. That's the fashion. And the fashion is to look old and wise and be respectable and to have a white, a white wig on to look old and mm-hmm. wise. And women were, you know, they were powdering their faces to look old <laughs> and women were and men were, and it was phony. And that was the cultural and that was a fashion. Right. Um, and now it's not, you know, it, it does, it does come and go, but mm-hmm. it, it does seem arbitrary. It does. Fashion is arbitrary anyway, but oh, um, yeah. I think some of the, some of the glamour is too, like whether mm-hmm. models are going to be, you know, really skinny as a rail or voluptuous. So that's that like, sometimes they're really skinny. Sometimes they're really curvy mm-hmm. and that, that changes. And it's, it's like a, a whim and, <laughs> and so we're getting dragged, we get dragged along. But yeah, it is, it mm-hmm. is somewhat arbitrary. And I think we'll get, we'll get sucked into that. But if you, I was thinking about that, the thing about um, birds do what they do, and you know, squirrels do what they do. And here we have all this consciousness, all this extra free will and thought power and all this stuff to contend with and the social pressures. Mm-hmm. And all these, you know, essentially feedback loops in our brain deciding what we should do and what we should think and what we should yeah. think about other people thinking about us mm-hmm. and getting ourselves into all this trouble. Oh yeah. You know, and, and if you just watch animals and whether it's your own pets or, or get out into the woods and just watch the animals, that's not their concern in life. You know, it, it's, mm. it's just doing what they do and it's usually survival. You know, I mean, for them it's food gathering and shelter and survival and, and, and I think yeah. that's, I don't want to say, you know, I don't like living in a nice shelter and having food at the ready, but I think because we live in, in the way that we do, that's what's taken us away from nature and, and, and into this judgment because we have time to do that. You know, yeah. most of us aren't right. trying to forage for food and eat only when we get it. That's not true for most of us. You know, and most of us have a good shelter. We don't need to build shelter before nightfall. Um, you know, but so we can sit back and spend the time and, and many of us spend that time in judgment, you know, and, and yeah. it's not just in judging others, but in judging ourselves, you know, and, and then, yeah. you know, saying, I don't look like that other person or I don't act like that other person. And, and then automatically it becomes, well, then I must be wrong, you know? So just because I don't act like my neighbor or a person I know, then they're right, I'm wrong. And, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, that leads us down, you know, that path. And, uh, you know, so hopefully people 
if you can look at the nature around you, and, and if you don't have woods, then, you know, even in the cities, they plant trees and there's parks, you know, which has all kinds of bugs and squirrels and, you know, things, you know, find where there's wildlife and, and just watch it, you know, just, just yeah. spend a moment and, and watch what the ants do or a bug does. And uh, right. that's one thing that's really helped me to refocus on kind of what's important in life. And I think too, even if you don't even have access to that, you could still buy flowers and look at the mm -hmm. design of them and look at the, the way that they're made so beautifully and how they, even the um, transitory nature of flowers and the transitory yep. nature of us. I think mm -hmm. there's just so much to be learned in, in metaphor about nature mm -hmm. too. There's just constantly lessons. I, um, and that's why going back to nature in, in the nicer weather, hopefully we'll have it soon, but <laughs> in the nicer weather to really go and learn and be a student of nature can right. breathe fresh life into our into our spiritual lives, like into all of our well-being, I think, in life. I think that yeah. that's why it was neat that you mentioned something I was sort of already we were we were um having a mind melt. Maybe that's dangerous. <laughs> maybe, maybe we should be worried. <laughs> but um, so we we're thinking in the same minds maybe because it's just getting nicer out in spring, but that it's important that we connect with the actual created world mm -hmm. and pull away from some of the some of the negative, destructive, social, political nonsense that happens sometimes and right. go right back to what it, what are the natural things around us that we can draw strength from and renewal mm -hmm. from that are the most real things in a way. Of, exactly. of creation and and I, I think you know especially now with the politics and everything going on you know in the world yeah. you know like you say you know watch what that flower you know is and really study the flower or, you know watch what the animals do and just think to yourself you know what concerns do they have right now you know what, what are the things at the top of their thought process you know when we know all the stuff on top of ours and maybe just spend a moment in thinking, what if that's all I had to worry about? Hmm. Maybe it'll change it. Yeah, right. And I, I think even though we, it's hard to set our worries aside sometimes, mm -hmm. we can still have at least, okay, for, you know, for the next 15 minutes, I'm going to give myself the permission to not worry about anything. For the next exactly. 15 minutes. All I'm going to, I have no plans to worry about any, any single thing. Mm -hmm. I'm giving myself a permission slip. It's sometimes a very liberating thing. And right. um, just, you know, saying this is, this is my walk. I'm going to take a walk. It's going to be a freedom walk of <laughs> 15 minutes or whatever <laughs> and, and give ourselves a time. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's very, it can be very life-giving. And if we have the opportunity to do those things now that the weather is starting to be spring-like, yeah. at least in the, who knows where people are actually watching this, but in the Northern True. Hemisphere in the United States, <laughs> it's starting to get nicer out, hopefully, yeah. soon. And um, I think that it's, it, does, it does regenerate me. Now, for some people, spring, it doesn't have the quality to them, but, but um, I really appreciate it when the buds come out. And I have yeah. lilac bushes that are just starting to get their buds on them. Nice. And lilacs are just one of my favorites. So... I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Do you have any closing thoughts for us, Chris? Um, what do we have to look forward to on your podcast? Um, well, on mine, I, I was looking to, I, I think, almost like a continuation of this talk and to focus a bit more on what we can learn um, you know, about being true to ourselves. And mm. the more that we're true to ourselves, then the more chance we have at finding our inner peace. Uh, and I, I guess I would just encourage people to, um, you know, find that time. And I, I like Lisa, you put about the permission, you know, give yourself that permission to find the time to observe whatever nature you have around you. And, uh, you know, just to really slow yourself down enough to notice it and watch it and, and ask the questions and see what you can learn from it. You know, it may seem strange, but what can you learn from that ant that's running across your floor? You know, it might be something, I don't know, before you smash it, you know, but, um, 
you know, so, but, you know, just really take those moments and, and slow yourself down and, and see what we can learn. Cause there's always something to learn. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody for, for being with us during this time. I'm going mm -hmm. to try to put, uh, if you, if you came in late or if you want to recommend this to a friend or anything, I'm going to try to put a replay of this on sparkmymuse.com in the replay section. And I will also send this to you, Chris, so that you yes. can, hopefully if it goes through, okay, um, so that you can put it on your YouTube channel. We've had some glitches in the past, but um, yeah. then it can be a resource for people later if you want to come back to it or exactly. see something that you missed or anything like that. Yeah, and exactly. hopefully you can you, know, you can all join us on the 24th at mm -hmm. 8 p.m. on a Sunday, the 24th, and yeah. hope. You. And don't be shy out there. We're not getting any people <laughs> contributing, but we're happy, to, we're happy to hear from you if you'd like to contribute to, to something that we're speaking about. Yeah. And if you have thoughts later, you know, find us on our social media and drop some thoughts there as well. And, you know, again, we can learn from each other. Yep. So, That's great. Thank you great. so much, Chris. All right. Thank you, Lisa. Have a great night. You too. Bye-bye. Good night. Thank you for listening to this episode with Chris Shea. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. <laughs>